The Raptors do their job against the Charlotte Hornets. A convincing win. 128-108 is your final. Welcome to Raptors Tonight. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Jack Armstrong, Sherman Hamilton, and Paul Jones. Sure, big win for the Raptors. They definitely needed it. Freddie Van Vliet, first Raptor to at least have 20 points and 20 assists in a game. Just your thoughts on that performance to start. Uh, well, going into this game, you know, I really felt it was imperative that the leaders be the leaders. Set the tone early. This could be kind of a, a dangerous game if you don't take it seriously. And I thought Freddie, Pascal, OG, all these guys needed to come out and set the tone. And I thought Fred was excellent at doing that. And, and again, we're talking about Fred's ability to orchestrate offense. He had six of those 20 assists in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And he just continued in that screen and roll with Jakob Pertl. They just have a really good dynamic, those two guys, in terms of reading each other, reacting to each other. And Fred's delivery is so good. The timing is really good. But then you saw Fred hooking Pascal up and then Fred hooking OG up with the cross-court passes for the three. So it, it, I thought Fred was, was really, really on point, did a great job managing the game and established – how important the game was from the jump and didn't really take his foot off the gas, which is what you need, I feel, from your leaders in a game like this. Mm -hmm. Jonesy, a team-high 38 assists or season-high 38 assists for the Raptors. Was there anything specific about the way they moved the ball that you liked? No, I did, like to Sherm's point, I just thought Fred set that tone. And um, l listen, Charlotte didn't at times offer a lot of resistance. But then again, if you're Toronto, you still have to take advantage of that. Find the open guy. Play unselfishly. Uh, I, I, I thought they did a good job of uh, making the extra pass. Like, oh, they, they, and, and an awareness of who had it going in the game. OG was terrific from the three-point line. And the ball somehow or other kept finding him. Well, that's a conscious effort. I mean, there was one where Fred took the ball. It was on the, on the near side wing. Fred was kind of losing his balance, but he saw OG open in the corner and Fred could have picked it up and taken a tough three himself. Mm -hmm. Instead, he makes the extra pass and Ananobi knocks it down. And I think um, there's a consciousness and the same way missing shots becomes contagious and infectious ball movement does too. Everybody's trying to make the next pass, the extra pass, and everybody feels involved. And when you're giving it up like that, you know it's going to come back to you. So I thought they did a really good job of, of, of sharing the ball tonight. And the leader, Fred, was the guy that set the tone. Yeah. And Jack, going back to this game being kind of tricky, you know, this is a must win game for Raptors. Every, every game's must win at this point if you want to move up in this play in situation. But, you know, Charlotte's basically solidified in where they're going to be in the standings. And they're playing for pride and just that free and easy, nothing to lose. That, that could be a tricky thing to to kind of overcome. You know, we saw them beat the Dallas Mavericks two times in a row this past, or last weekend. Well, coming into the game, what, they went three out of four, right? Yeah. yeah. So they've uh, they, they played well. And, um, you know, I said on Friday night at, after the Sixers game that I thought Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam struggled in that game, and they needed to play well. And to Sherm's point about, hey, he came, Fred came out and set the tone right away, and all the veteran guys set the tone right away. Uh, I, you know, Pascal was really good today too. Mm -hmm. And but this is the time of year they they should be good. I mean, this is the, this is the time of year that you want to hit your stride, you want to be at your best, you want to be dialed in. And and to Jonesy's point, there was very little resistance from Charlotte, and it was a very comfortable, free and easy game. There were times that, you know, I was looking at it, watching it on TV. I'm like, man, it's like a pickup game today. It's mm -hmm. just very, very relaxed and very, and you're getting kind of what you want. And, you know, you know, uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, the two games against Boston and the game against Milwaukee, if those guys have to play for something, uh, you are not going to be free and easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, it's nice to get a win like this. It's nice to get back to 500. It's nice to say, hey, Tuesday night, you got a chance to get uh, to be uh, have a winning record and have a chance mm -hmm. at a winning season. And, uh, you know, considering how frustrating this year has been, uh, maybe you can win a few games down the stretch here and have a winning season uh, and then, you know, work your way through the play in. But uh, mm -hmm. 
you know, all that's in front of you still, in spite of how frustrating it's been, yeah. all that's still there on your plate and you can still accomplish a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Let's talk about Siakam 29th birthday today. Great way to celebrate 30 some odd points, you know, a bunch of assists, bunch of rebounds. When he's playing like this, when he's getting his points and being dominant within the flow of the offense, it feels like the whole team thrives for that with that. Well, what are they doing? I think the whole team should put a petition in so that Pascal can play against the Hornets every single game <laughs> of his career. I mean, he just goes to work on them. I mean, he has his way. He scores at will. You know, he rebounds at will. He does whatever he wants against his team. And, and it was good to see him have another performance like that because – to be quite honest, as Jack mentioned, that last game, if, if the Raptors got more from Pascal, more from a Freddie, that game could have been different. And that would have been an even bigger win than today. So I think Pascal is understanding there's no more time for any slip ups. There's no more mm -hmm. times that he can have a game off. He's got to bring it every single game. And it's good that he's got the jump starter to his good game streak in terms of Charlotte for two games, but he was excellent. I mean, he, he was aggressive. He was downhill. He finished at the hoop. His three-point shots were wide open, three-point takes. That brand or that, that, that level of Pascal can be very, very difficult to manage, even on a better team. So I just think it's good timing to see him kind of get to that kind of group. Yeah. Uh, and Jonesy, you know, much was made about the way the second quarter went against Philadelphia and, you know, who came on from the bench to play and how that, that quarter went. What did you think about the way the bench came in and, and, and played this time around? Uh, I thought they were good, but again, to, you know, to Jack's point about it being a comfortable game, um, they, they didn't, maybe that game took some of the pressure off mm -hmm. in terms of the bench. Like we can't play any worse. So let's go out <laughs> there and get it done, you know, or the team in general, listen, that second quarter against Philadelphia was a total aberration. It, 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 a, 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 you know, a total off the map performance. It's not going to happen again. It can't get any worse. So let's go out there and do our thing. And I thought they got some nice minutes tonight from, from Boucher. Uh, you know, Jeff Doughton is always solid when he takes the floor. Uh, Nick is starting to, we see him uh, reintegrating Coloco more and more. Uh, and, and uh, I, listen, I, I think they're going to need the bench for stretches of important games because as much as the fans write in and cry about, well, how can you have Fred and Pascal on, on the bench or Scotty on the bench at the start of the fourth quarter? Well, they can't play 12 minutes in a close game like that all out for the entire fourth quarter, or, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can't log 43 effective minutes without taking some plays off. So you're going to have to have the bench step in, and play hard enough, play well enough, keep leads, increase leads, uh, not let deficits increase while the starters get a rest and they can come back in. Uh, it just, mm -hmm. It's just a fact of the way it is. So, um, and, and to Nick's credit, he continues to go to his bench and say, listen, I need you guys. And, and uh, the, the length or the amount of time that you play is based on your productivity on the floor. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jack. Just speaking of the bench, the one concern I had late in the game, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me, was obviously OG Ananobody leaving the court and having to go to the locker room and get x-rays. And in OG six years, anytime something like that happens, you get very nervous. Uh, so fingers crossed, knock wood, right, that he's going to be okay because he's playing great. Mm -hmm. He is, yeah. and, the re and I, I've said it many times, the reason he's playing great is he's playing. He's actually playing. And the fact that he's playing, he's getting reps and he's playing more and he's playing better. Therefore, his piece of the puzzle is growing because he's, able, he's available to play. He's being productive and therefore he's getting a, a greater responsibility the thing that's always been frustrating for him in his career is the fits and starts of you You get these flashes and then, oh, he misses 12 games. He, you, he plays again and the same thing happens. So you just hope and pray that mm -hmm. he's okay and he's able to play Tuesday night. And if they are cautious, 
and they say, well, we'll hold them out Tuesday, but we got Wednesday in Boston. I get that. The challenge is you got to win Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so it'll be, it'll be very interesting, but that, that to me, just one word of caution. Cause when I saw that, I'm like, Oh my goodness, not again. And you got other people on the bench right now, banged up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I saw, saw the slow-mo replay of that and it, it's it's tough. It could be bad, but it it, it could be one of those ones that you, you know you're you're okay in the next couple of days. Um, and it's tough because not only he brings you this amazing defensive presence, but he's 44, Sherm, for his last 83 from the three point line, which is you know over 50. percent That is a massive sample size. This guy is just a dominant NBA shooter right now. Well, he's he's doing a great job in terms of offensively not only shooting the ball, but being very, very efficient mm -hmm. when shooting the ball. And, you know, you look at the way the Raptors played in a game like this, where they have 38 assists. You look at OG's three-point shots, they were practice shots. Yeah, That's how the ball was moving, and that's how wide open he was, and he's been deadly. And I, I just like the fact that even though he's shooting such a high field goal percentage, usually players who are playing that well, they want more. Like, they try to do a bit more to kind of score a bit more. OG is just staying in his lane. He's continuing to get what he gets off of the offense. And when his number is called, he makes a play. Mm -hmm. But the best thing about it, guys, to me, is that even though offensively he's doing a great job, there's no slippage defensively. He is continuing to get after it on the defensive end. And to me, that kind of balance is something that you rarely see when guys start to figure it out offensively. So it's great to see him consistently bring it on that end of the floor. I, I just want to make one point. I'm watching OG right now, and I'm thinking of 2018, 2019, a young OG, I don't know, be having the honor and privilege of playing with a teammate like Kawhi Leonard. And I'm watching OG play now. He looks like Kawhi out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. like just efficient, stoic, outstanding on both ends, like really good. Like, really good. Now, I'm not putting him in the category of Kawhi. Mm -hmm. Kawhi, when healthy, is a Hall of Fame player. At the same time, he looks like him right now. That's really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Jonesy, what about going forward? What do you think the Raptors need to do to tidy up anything? Do they need to tidy up anything for this next game? I, I thought the defense slipped a little bit in the second half. Uh, mm -hmm. It got into a, well, we're ahead by enough. And, and I've always said this, you know, recently, especially the NBA seems to have uh, devalued defense a little bit. And sometimes it's your offense that wins you the games or keeps you in games. Um, and, and I thought Charlotte got, got, they didn't, I don't, I didn't think at any time they were a threat to win the game, but mm -hmm. I thought they got very comfortable offensively at, at points during that game where the Raptors kind of treated it as, okay, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. And they didn't make it as difficult. Let, let's face it, at the beginning of the game, Charlotte was shooting under 40, 42%. Like the Raptors' defense came out, and what it seemed like once they established that and their offense was going, it's like, okay, well, we can lean on the offense today. And they 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 took their foot off the gas a little bit defensively. I, I just think, you know, and, and you know, both Sherman and Jack have said this before, and I, I totally agree with it. And, I, you know, I've said it too. When you play the good teams – we get to Wednesday night against Boston, Friday night against Boston, maybe next Sunday against Milwaukee. When you play the good teams, you can't have it your turn, my turn. Because when your turn doesn't produce a basket and their turn keeps producing basket, your right. defense has to step up. Right. So I, I just thought Charlotte got a little bit comfortable offensively in the middle of the game and in the second half. I'd, I'd like to see that continue to tighten up the way it was in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, great stuff. Going to stop it there. Raptors finish their mini two-game series against the Charlotte Hornets on Tuesday. Tip-off goes at 7 p.m. Eastern. After the game, be sure to catch Raptors tonight on Raptors YouTube and NBA TV Canada. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.